Thor's magical hammer. I mean this one. There is obviously just one and it belongs to this guy. In our NFT world, I believe that everyone should be able to own one instead of these useless crabs. Who needs physical things anyway? So I created a collection Thor's hammer for everyone. It has four main attributes. The head, handle, grip, and something called pommel, the round knob at the end of the handle. I know it's a really strange word, but it exists. When we create NFT collections, we always try to create different variations of the objects to get different unique combinations. So in our case, the attribute head will have just one trait, and that's gonna be the same shape of the head for the hammer. So what we're gonna vary is its material. The attribute handle is gonna be just a cylinder and again it will have different materials. I thought that it would be interesting to kind of make the hammer as a consumer product. So some of the materials of the handle are resembling yes some of the famous brands. The grip has five different shape variations and on top of that we will also add materials to randomize. The pommel, that round knob if you remember, also has five different shape variations and we will also add some materials to it so we will create even more variations in the generation process. If you were about to create an NFT collection of 5 or 10k unique combinations, you would just add more attributes and trade variations. There are two ways of doing it. First, you can keep the same shape of the object and add different materials. That's what we did with the head of the hammer. Or you can add a completely new shape as I did with the grip. And the third bonus way is of course combining both, adding the new shape and the materials of it. To generate unique combinations of attributes and their traits, I'm gonna use Raptor plugin for Blender. You can see four main attributes, the head, handle, pommel, and grip ring. But right now we're gonna focus on the head. There is just one trait collection called plain head, that is this head over here. We're gonna rename the collection to fx mat underscore and plain head. So that's the way we indicate that this trait will have a material randomization. Let's get to material properties to see its material. And there we have a brush metal. We can also just see that if I switch here to the shading viewport. So we have the brush metal over here. I will start with renaming the first material that got assigned to the whole mesh object. So let's go in and rename that one to fx slot one and underscore. So that's all we had to do. And of course we will add more materials that will get replaced in this FX slot one. So let's click on this plus button and let's go with a new material that's gonna be a damaged metal. And I'm gonna rename it to FX in number one. Those two numbers have to be the same. So there is a slot and there are other materials that got you know, randomized into it. So that's why there is FX in and underscore. So that's all we had to do to tell the Raptor plugin that those two materials are there for the randomization process. Let's add another one. And this time it's gonna be the damaged metal with a glow. And all we have to do with it is just rename it to FX in, again, it's gonna be number one and underscore. And let's add a last one and that is gonna be the galvanized steel and we will also rename it to fx in one underscore so the materials for randomization of the head are ready to see exactly how it works we're gonna head to the Raptor plugin here and we will click on the analyze scene button the plugin just recognizes all the attributes and the traits that are in there. If we look closely to the attribute head, we can see all those four materials that we just added in there for the randomization. There's damaged metal and its glow variation as well as the galvanized steel and brushed metal. Now I will do exactly the same with the attribute handle because if we open it up, we can see that there's only just one trait with just one object where the materials will be you know added to and then they will get randomized on that same object 
And here we can see all the materials that will get to randomize on that handle. If we head back to the Ratchet plugin, we can see that the attribute handle got changed to all those materials that we just added. Let's explore the attribute grip ring. In here we can see that we have five different traits. And the reason here for having a separate trait collection instead of just one as we did with the material randomizations of the head or the handle is because if I switch from spike ring to the even ring, we can see that those two are just having a different shape. And at such case, it has to be in a different trait collection. So the attribute grip ring has five different traits that vary in their shapes. And we can also see that here in the Rapture plugin that it recognized exactly those five trait collections. Do you remember the third bonus way how we can expand the number of unique combinations in our collection? Yes, the combination of unique shapes and the material randomization. So we already have unique shapes here and that's why we are just gonna add different materials. So let's select that even ring, go to its materials and let's add a material to it. So it's gonna be the copper. I will make a copy of this copper, so that's going to be clicking on this button over here. And we're going to rename that one FX slot 3 underscore. It's going to be a even ring copper. And the reason we created a copy is because all the other rings will also have this FX slot uh, copper material, but to kind of recognize which one of those spiky or even or angled rings it is, we just needed a separate copy where we can have a unique name with an even ring copper on it. So we're just gonna do the copy of the same material for all the other rings as well. So let's add another material to the even ring plus button and gonna select the other ones that is gonna be the silver. And again, we will make a copy of it that's why we see the silver dot zero zero one and we're gonna rename that one this time to fx in number three underscore and it's gonna be an even ring silver and last material of it will be the very nice gold material again let's make a copy and rename it to fx in three underscore even ring gold and now i'm gonna add those three materials in the same fashion to all the other rings in here you can see all the materials of the rectangular ring for example let's head back to the rapture plugin and let's have a look at the group ring here we can see all the materials that we copied and gave them a unique name for each of the trade with uh, the spike ring even ring we can see that each has a silver gold and copper variation so that way we achieve to have that one material as a standalone trade here to which we can set a rarity. Each unique shape of the grip ring got three material variations. And so from five variations, we expanded it to 15. All trades in the Pokemon got the same material setup as the grip ring. <clears throat> so if we check out the Rapture plugin, let's click on analyzing button and we can see that we got the same expansion with the pommel uh, materials or traits as with the grip rings. So right now we have 4,500 possible unique combinations in total. I also added plane axis and then add that to the parent of all the attribute traits. So now when I move that empty plane axis, I can just move the whole hammer any way I want. So I just tilt it a little bit like that to have it really nicely looking on renders. All the traits are ready. We can also play with the rarities, but let's just leave it as it is. And you can also see that I unhit all the traits in the scene. So there's a huge mess. And uh, the last thing we're gonna change over here is the maximum number of combinations. So I'm just gonna generate a hundred of those Thor hammers. And then let's hit generate. To see generated combinations, I'm just gonna move the frame number. So let's go to number one, two, and you can see that both the grip and the pommel is changing. 
but we don't see the change of materials and that's only because of technical limitations of Blender. Otherwise, the randomization of materials actually happened. One of the ways to see that the materials got randomized is checking the JSON metadata files. So in here we can see, for example, the trade type hat. The first combination is galvanized steel, while the second one has a damaged metal over there. But the way better way to see it is rendering the collection. So I'm gonna head to the output properties. In here I will just pick the folder where I want the files to be rendered to. Then we can change the file format to any that we wish, but I'm okay with the PNGs and we will also be okay with just the RGB colors because there is no transparency. Then let's head back to the router plugin and scroll all the way down. And in render settings, we can find the file format that we just set to be PNGs. And we also have an option to start the rendering from different combinations, but we will leave it as it is because we want to start from the beginning. Right now we have two options how we can render the collection. The first one is going to render and render animation here, or we can hit the custom render here in the plugin. There is a huge difference between those two. If we use material randomization, then we also need to use the custom render in order to see the materials being changed in final renders. So in our case, it's definitely a custom render, so let's hit it. And these are the final renders. As usual, find all the links to download the files down in the description. Hit the like button if you are also a Marvel fan as I am. Thank you so much for watching and Punk is out.